I think I admire anybody who tries to invent something, you know, visually or with words or anything like that. What matters most to me is that it's unique, and it's, so in that way, it's the it's the struggle for clarity. That when I read a struggle for uh, the struggle for clarity in any art form, then I admire it, and I know somebody is on a journey that I recognize, and that to me is what art is. One, one thing that's tricky about color is that everybody sees color differently. It's about how your eye physically, you know, perceives color. So there's a, there, there are people who, who work with color in, in color theory in very particular kind of ways. I don't do that. But what I, what I do do is I've looked for ranges of color that have an emotional impact on me. Part of the way I use color is I like to use color that is very specific and indistinct at the same time. So it can be, uh, for instance, the color, the name of the paint that's on this painting is cadmium purple, but it doesn't read as purple to me, it reads as dried blood to me. So the, co the kind of colors that I'm interested in are the colors that might kick off some kind of association in me or in somebody else and if it does it does if it doesn't it doesn't but it's but it's also because i don't want anybody naming a color particularly i don't want you to read a narrative into my work i want the narrative i want the work to generate a narrative or recreate an experience or a memory in me or in you so that's what i work toward now, it's very personal but it's but at the same time reaching out And they, they sit around for weeks sometimes, but I, they're out and I look at them and I go and I, so I start off this way and these, these are sort of general notes and then I go back to each one separately to see if I can make it extraordinary, surprising, unusual, something that shouldn't work but does, which is what I like to do. I mean, I, I think that it that it showed up, and then I had to think about where it came from. And part of where it came from was about being the other, about being the person who is on the outside looking in. In other words, being an American living in Canada and looking back at this country, being a, an American who grew up in Canada and going to East Pakistan, and not being and living outside of the American community. So these so these layers of perception were kind of built into into my experience, but also having lived in South Asia, what I learned and what was fascinating and what posed a, an aesthetic conundrum for me for a long time was, was an idea of space. If I had to describe an idea of space, it's not European space, it's not Japanese space, it's South Asian space, which is profoundly different than the way we talk, most people in that, not so much now anymore, but people who were my art teachers talked about space. They talked about European space, about three-dimensional space, about three-point perspective, all those kinds of things. You know, Asian, South Asian space is, is layered, it's multi-layered, and it's very deep, and different kinds of space can coexist at the same time within the same frame. So that's what fascinated me. I 
talked about being the other. So, you know, when I left, when I came back from South Asia, went to school and then came, I went back to Canada and then I came here, I was still the other here. And I had children, you know, just as soon as I got out of art school and it was very clear I was going to be the single parent who took care of them, which was fine. But I, and I didn't really know where, where I was. I was deeply internally confused about about aesthetics, and that was because of my experience in South Asia. And there wasn't a place for me in any case. You know, it was just, it, there was no, there were a few women who sort of rose to the surface, but not very many. And there were no, there were no women mentors. You know, we had no mentors. My own mother couldn't have helped me, even if she'd wanted to. You know, there were no women artists who were strong enough to say, well, you can do this and you can do this, and this is how you take care of your children. And this is, I mean, it didn't exist. Now it exists. There's not a source for the ideas, but there's something I'm trying to find out for myself. So it's more discovery. It's what am I going to find? What am I going to learn today? What kind of questions am I going to ask today? What can I learn? What is there any resolution to this? And there never is. So the one feature of all of this work is that the work begins. Each work is something complicated, and then I start throwing things out of it so that there is the minimum left that will convey something satisfactory. And what I, for me, what I like to do is I like to make work that is autobiographical in that sense because it's my experience of the world. So I am exposing my experience of the world. I just like doing it, you know, it makes me, it makes me feel complete, it keeps me, it keeps me alive, it keeps my sense of humor, you know, it keeps me calm when I, when I work, and I enjoy doing it, and if I don't do it, then I'm not a very nice person to be around sometimes. <laughs> But, but, you know, I don't, I, for me, I, I, I don't think there's anything unusual about it because I guess I've always, I've always been this way and always, I always feel just a little bit at odds with any, with wherever I am and, but I, I don't feel that way when I'm in the studio. If I go in the studio and shut the door, then I feel, I don't like I'm at home. Mm -hmm.